Hi everyone, Albar here. This is going to be my solo walkthrough and guide to the level 19 heroic quest, Genesis Point, on the Elite difficulty, with all four endings. Enjoy! Hi everyone, Wardrak here. First, before you get into the quest, you're going to have to pick up a hireling. I recommend picking up a hireling who's kind of hardy, who won't die from two hits from some kind of orathon or something. You're going to have to leave him by himself so he can pull a switch. So you want somebody who can defend himself. Okay, the quest giver is the one standing right in the middle. And the quest itself also happens to be kind of in the middle of the map. By the way, did you know you can mount... Well, you can get on your mount during the loading screens to save time? Well, now you know. You're welcome. Okay, here's where we started this little cubby hole. And now we're walking up and around. And then just a straight line until we get to the quest. This entire area of Shabarath is full of quests that many new players don't know at all. Also, for a lot of returning old players, you might find it intimidating to run it by themselves without finding a party because they're not really sure how the mechanics work. So. This is one of those quests that can be very confusing, especially with all its four endings, so hopefully you'll understand it clearly by the end of this video. Anyways, I'm going to stick all the dialogue and just get on to the quest. The first step is to find the control rooms the Yugoloth spoke of. Okay, we walk down the first hallway and we get to this first room with the shrine. Now here I've got the whole map open with all the different endings. Now take a good look at it. Here's the breakdown of how the map works. This is the start, this is the first shrine room. Now there's this square of walkways or rooms, hallways that go around the entire quest. And on the bottom is divided into four different areas. Each zone has its own challenge. Now, above these room, above these areas, are these four guard rooms. Each guard room has a switch. You need to pull all four switches, and they will have a portal that will allow us to go down to the bottom. Also, there's control panels, and each one of them will control some of the objectives on the bottom. And finally, once we do all of that, we'll have one switch that we can pull that will open up one of the four endings. Anyways, for now, we're going to go counterclockwise around in these hallways, clearing as we're going. You notice that some of the levers are locked in place. This switch is the one you need to pull in each one of the rooms. Pulling all four from the four different guard rooms will open up the portal who will be allow us to go downstairs. We're gonna call that portal the elevator portal because it allows us to go between floors. So we need to pull this first switch, the one inside of the fire pit. All four of them will together open up the elevator portal. Now, when you walk into the room, there's a few mobs. Killing them will spawn two waves, one at a time, of two Orathons and a Marbazu, those green devils. So, you have to kill one wave, then the second wave, and then the room is clear. Okay, here's how the control panels work. If you look down at the bottom, there's a door. You can see on the floor where it breaks and it turns into a door. The lever right over here in the corner is what opens it. Every room has two levers, one to the door on the right, one to the door on the left. We can only pull them once. You can see I just opened up the door. That means if I go into the room next to us and I pull again, it will close the door. So you do not want to do that. They have these square valves or levers. Look what it does. It opens up these doors. As far as the quest concerned, it means nothing. So you can pull them if you want, they don't do anything. 
the most important thing is to make sure the way on the bottom is open so we can go between sector to sector okay now there's this maze down here and there's these four levers these four levers control the blade barriers the the force barriers and also the blade traps they starting from the left to right this number three is the one that we want to be pulled if you just notice pulling it makes everything else face up you can only have one of them face down or one of them down or off at one time here's the center there's a blade barrier there's a blue energy barrier blocking my way and to open it i'll need to pull lever number one later i'm going to put my hireling to pull it for me anyways we'll keep on for now and we'll clean out this area you can see these orathons, they patrol these hallways very slowly and they respawn. So um, that's why I said I want to have a hireling who won't get instantaneously killed when the orathon inevitably shows up. Notice that pulling the lever isn't what spawns the monsters, it's clearing out the first group of monsters will spawn the first wave of the two Arathons and Green Bearded Devil, and then killing them will spawn the second wave. There we go. This room we have a different control panel, here it's just these two square levers. They do nothing because all they do is open up these gates at the back who are just there for, I guess for fancy, it's part of like the quest you can play around with it, but it doesn't actually do anything. Again I'm going to pull the lever that opens up one of the gates, the one to the right. As you see, the one to the left is already opened. I don't want to pull that lever, it'll just close it for me, and I won't be able to reopen it. If you pull levers you're not supposed to, there's a chance of screwing up the quest so you can't complete it. So be very careful. Check before you pull anything. Make sure if you don't need to pull it, don't. Great, now I'm stuck. Luckily that didn't last too long. Anyways, here we go again, that was wave 1, here's wave 2. And then we can go over to the control panel. I'm going to open up the gate that allows me to go between the sectors. This side's already open. Here we go. Now you can see these five fire pits. These levers are locked. Click on them, it says it's locked. You can't use them. It's only because of like slight lag that it's moving. Now above you've got these like purple clusters of mage fire cannons. Here's what they do. You pick one of these five buttons around the center button. Now select which one you want to use and then you can press the middle button to fire it. What does it do? Well nothing. It's, again, it's just for fancy. If there'll be mobs down there in those pits, you could use the fire cannons to shoot them, but for right now it means nothing. So, if you want to play around with it, that's how it works. Pick one of the five surrounding buttons, and then you press the center button to fire it.
Okay, here we go. Wave one and wave two again, and we should be clear to take care of the control panel again. Yeah, and I'm stuck again. Anyways, here this is, again, the lever that now just opened up the elevator portal. There's only one of them, and it opens up in this room. That's why I took, I went around and ended in this room, so I don't have to run to a different room. You also get a chest once you open up the elevator portal. Finally, I'm just going to make sure that the last passageway is open. Pulling this last lever. Now all four sectors at the bottom are connected, so I can run between them. Here again, there's these two cannons, and there's a bunch of breakables down at the bottom. Again, these two switches do nothing but open up those little rooms in the back. They're useless, they don't mean anything. They're just for fun. And there's these crates at the bottom. You can use these cannons to break them. The top switch will shoot that little room who does, doesn't do anything. Left and right will determine the direction of the group of mage cannons. So here, they're going to shoot now to the left, because I clicked the left first. Now I'm going to click the right, and then fire it again. It's going to break all the ones to the right. Now you should keep in mind that these breakables that you just shot with the cannon will be considered as misadventure, and they won't count towards your breakable count when it comes to XP. So I'm only doing this to show it off, but if you want to do for the XP, you should go down and break it yourself. Then this quest, I break enough breakables that I should be eligible to get the maximum XP bonus for breakables, but because they're considered misadventures, I miss out. Anyways, down over here we've got these a bunch of crates, so we need to break all of them. Uh, you don't have to kill all the wild men, you just have to break the crates themselves. This area is the portal bay. It's basically, they have this portal and they're sending crates of, well, ammunition or weapons or I guess wild men as soldiers to fight for them so the story over here in this sector is we want to break all these crates break you know destroy all their weapons so they can't send any and funnily enough the optional from this sector is called the portal bay and the objective over there is to destroy the portals that they use to send their weapon shipments I'll be through this blue door. We'll only open up later. Here I'm heading on into the prisoner section. He has seen cries of despair tell you that you have found the prisoner holding him. I just realized I forgot one of the crates. I'm going to go back and get it. Okay, now we're finished with this sector. We've got all of the crates broke. We, sorry, we broke all the crates and now we can move on to where we were before, the prisoner section. Over here we've got these five prisoner cages. And we need to release all the prisoners. It's part of the quest objective. It's not an optional. You have to do it. The end objective from this area is also going to involve prisoners and releasing them. So when it comes to theme, you should remember based on which area you cleaned, what ending you're going to have. You'll see later, it makes sense. Anyways, here we go, we start cleaning at releasing all these prisoners. now. These cells have this like switch on them. Once we pull the switch, we'll unlock the valve at the top. So we have to pull all five of these, one in each cage. Then I'll have to go back up and then I can open them, come back down and release all the prisoners. 
course, if you have a party member to do this for you, it's much faster. And you can do this with your hireling, but probably setting yourself up to lots of aggravation when the hireling doesn't want to cooperate. So if I can do it myself, I do it myself. So that's what this is. Now I'm going to just run back to the elevator portal, go back up and open those cages. The prisoner section's on the top, on the top of the map, or north. It's always a good idea to look at the map before you start running in the wrong direction. The guard rooms, they stick into the center of the map, not stick out. So when you look at the map, it's counterintuitive, only if you see a little part of it, which direction you're facing looks right now like we're in the south room if you just look at the map or well, actually the north anyway now that we've unlocked the bottom we can unlock it from the top you see this will drop the fire barriers and that will allow us to enter and release all these prisoners again this is part of the quest objective this is not an optional we have to do this Man, getting stuck all the time, especially when you try to record a video. Anyways, we're back to the elevator portal. But before we do that, I'm going to set up my hireling for the maze section. Now that I've got all the four sectors open, I don't want to have to come back here again. So I'm going to go set them up now. The maze section, or with the energy barriers, and I mean energy barriers for a reason, you'll see later at the final ending, is the bottom section, or south. And that's where we're heading. I'm just checking this hallway, make sure it's clear, there's no Orathon coming. I see some Orthon lumbering towards me, I'll go clear him out before I put my hireling down. I'm gonna make sure he's on attack mode just in case somebody attacks him. Anyways, the first barrier is open. Here, I'll show you how it looks. I'm gonna first close it. Here, this is the center barrier. Valve number one opens up the center barrier, but it will close up all the other barriers. Valve number three is what will open up the barrier to the right where I'm going to be coming from. Now I can use select next to go between all the, all the valves. Now pulling those valves actually disables the blade traps in the maze. Now what exactly does it? Well for the life of me I can't tell. Wiki says that it's valve number four and you have to pull it down. But as you just saw right now I never touched valve number four and still there's no blade traps. There's still swirling blade traps. A spike comes out and it spins around and there's three blades that spin around it. Could be just pulling the valves a bunch of times disables them. I'm not sure but oh whatever. I guess my, my best guess is to pull the valves a few times. If you pull like more than three valves or pull valves more than three times, I think it disables it. That, that's what I can see, but other than that, I can't really tell you. Anyways, when in doubt, just pull all those valves one time. I think you should be covered. There's a small torture room. 
in the prisoner section was a few breakables so that's what I'm doing now also freeing the prisoners will give you a chest the area with the crates doesn't give you a chest but the area with the prisoners and the other two areas also they all give you chests when you complete them got to fight a few different rounds of monsters and they get activated a few at a time so you don't have to fight all of them at once and supposedly every round gets a little tougher last round there was an orange name now there's like six seven or eight I'm not sure exactly how many but there's more each round Here's our final round. This one gives us a red named that you have to fight. Killing him completes this round. You don't have to actually kill all the monsters. We'll have to kill all the monsters in the previous rounds to continuously unlock the next round. But the boss over here is the objective. Killing him completes this round. Okay, now we're going to enter the energy barrier section or the maze. The center of the maze before you. This magical focus is a much smaller. This is the way we want to go. I'm just going to clear out the breakables in these dead ends. Relay magical energies throughout Shavara. Here is the barrier that's locked by valve number three. As you can see, we already have it opened because that's how we preset it. And this is barrier that's locked by number one. I'm just gonna go down this dead end again and get the breakables. Okay, now we need somebody to pull barrier number one. So up there you can see where the guard tower, well, the guard room is. I'm going to hit select next and go between all the things. So this one's the square valve. There's only one of them. So the next thing in line is valve number one. I tell my hireling to pull it. Ta-da! And the barrier went down. Now this beam of light, do not touch it. If you touch it, it's instant death. So just stay away from it. You need to pick up this book or whatever it is. And that's it. Completes the section. And it gives you a chest. But before you can pick it up, you get teleported you and your entire party not your hireling you get teleported into this room and you have to fight this orange named the bearded devil killing him you can open up this lever this will give you a portal out of here and you get an extra chest this is a one way you cannot get back into this room completing the four objectives of the four different rooms will send you to this room and there's no respawn over here, so I'm just putting my hireling so he's safe. And this sends you back to the elevator teleport. Teleporter. Okay, now you can see that the bubble around this big switch has been opened. And there's one in each room. There's also these three valves on the other side. They lock the other exits. Basically, don't touch them. They will lock you out. They were designed uh, by the devils, I guess, to screw with the players. They don't kill the player, they just kill your run, so don't touch them. Anyways, we've got the four rooms, and each room will correspond to the ending on that side. The top is going to be the prisoners. The right, though, the one on the east, is the main exit. 
that's the official exit and it's the only one who completely shows up on the map the other ones once you enter this is like a portal you have to go through when you go into this own area was basically like different map respell or reset your kill count and it doesn't show up on the map you can't see where you're going so this is the official ending anyways i have to run all the way back to the east or to the far right and pull the big switch over there that will open up the ending that i want In my opinion, this is also the coolest ending. I like this one. You hear one of the secure level doors below grind open. The devil's Remember, this is only one elevator teleport. Teleporter, sorry. And you have to run back to it just to get downstairs. This ending also has a devil general, and that's consistent with all these quests in Chavarath while having at least a potential end boss who is a devil general. I'm just gonna rest here before I continue. While I'm at it, just remind you to please hit like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. There was a lot of effort put into this video and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. This quest actually doesn't take that long. If I didn't keep on stopping to show you what I'm doing or keep on doing a whole bunch of optional small details like going for all the breakables and stuff like that probably would have been faster anyways first I'm gonna go down though towards the maze we got a few last breakables on this side and also there's the chest since I got teleported to the minute to that special room the trap room with the bearded devil I didn't have time to pick up the chest there's also another small chest who spawns in the center of the maze I want you to look at this very clearly Look what happens when I jump. I bump my head, there's like an invisible ceiling here. So anybody who had a smart idea of trying to figure out how to get over the maze walls, sorry, they blocked it out completely. They put a big invisible ceiling to prevent players from getting on top of the wall. And by the way, you can have monsters spawn and walk on top of it. It's a bug, but it can happen. That's it. This is the optional chest. It's someplace in the maze and it can spawn in multiple locations. You'll have to look around for it. Right now I'm just clearing out the last breakables. If you want to see monsters spawn on top of this invisible wall, what you do is you stand in one of the guard rooms very close to the gate, very close to the gate, to the fence. And if an Orathon spawns in front of you, it will spawn actually outside of the fence and will fall down and land on top of this invisible wall just out of curiosity if you have to see it anyway it looks like I've cleared out everything and you can see now once you've solved the maze all the barriers drop so you can walk around freely if you're gonna go for breakables you definitely should do it at the end after the barriers are down rather than have somebody keep on telling telling continuously telling somebody to pull the barriers for you this breakable you have to hit with a ranged weapon that's it. So now we've got the chest from the center over here. Now we can head out of this maze. Well, we're not going to head out of the maze this time because this is not the ending we selected. There's just a few breakables on the other side. You can enter from one of these two sides, but it doesn't make a difference which. I just need it for clearing out the map because I want to go for like... Well, well, not conquest, but basically the ransack or whatever it is.
Yeah, there we are. We passed through the maze, and now we're gonna go to east or the right side of the map. You have chosen to and now these blue barriers are down, and we can go to the end. This whole area is divided up into two parallel hallways that are basically the same and they keep on connecting someplace in the middle. So there's monsters on both sides and breakables on both sides and whatever. I'm gonna go down both of course. You can see over here, this is the other side with the blue barrier, also down. Again, basically it's copy-paste, exactly like the other side. Same thing, Orthon guards, tieflings, all the same stuff. The point is, if you're playing this with a group, and you come here, you might be surprised if you already passed this entire area and it's full of monsters, they might have went down the other hallway. So just keep that in mind. Okay, here we have these rooms with these barriers. Now, they just go down by themselves, it takes a few seconds, and for a few seconds they're like a one-way barrier. They can shoot you and you can't shoot them. They just go down by themselves, so you don't have to hit anybody, you don't have to kill anything. Just wait for it, it'll go down by itself. I guess all the barrier does is gives them the initiative. They get to put on their resistance and get in a few shots before you get to hit them. You can see on the map that there's a little passageway over here that connects between two identical rooms. Again, this one also has a barrier. While I'm waiting for it to go down, I'm just going to open up this door to the main room again. This quest is level 19, so if you're doing it on Elite, it's technically 21. When these quests came out, there was no such thing as Epic. There was no Epic Destinies, and the cap was level 20. It was much tougher then, before you had, you know, Epic Destinies and all the rest. Anyways, here's the Devil General. He sits here in this room, and once you attack him, waves of enemies spawn, and they continuously spawn. Gotta get my selfie in. <laughs> He's one of those white pit fiends. Basically, like all other white pit fiends, he can hit you with his curse and he can hit you with his chain attack that makes you stick in place. Here's a funny thing. If you stand very close to him, but don't move or don't attack, he doesn't notice you. He just stands there. Yeah, and that's it. This is the official exit. Uh, of course, you get a chest for it.
Anyways, I'm just running out of the main room back into this hallway so I get a second to breathe so I can finish out of this quest without being hit. As you can see, it doesn't take too much time. I've got my 70 breakables, but I still didn't get the full reward. Also, I'm missing out on XP because I finished this five, the fifth time in less than 24 hours. Okay, now to the optionals. First, we've got the West, who's going to be the Portal Bay. As I explained before already, this is the one that they have those crates with the wild men. This is the closest one to the portal elevator. So this is the most convenient one. You don't have to run around. You just pull the main switch and you jump right down. And from here, we're also going to be heading directly into the end. So probably the fastest option. Here the blue barrier door is down and now we can go through this door. You have chosen to Pull the lever. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Ta-da! Yeah, now you're waiting for the floor to you're waiting for the door to open and instead the floor breaks. I know this is about opinion and taste, everybody's got what they like the most. Me personally, I probably dislike this one the most. I found it the dullest. It's not really exciting. Here, to open up this door, first you have to go into water. There's a door, and behind this door, there's a lever. Once we go through this portal, we're technically on a new map. So if you open up the map now, you'll find nothing. You're still on the original map and a reset our kill count. Anyways, we have to just head down this hallway and we'll be in the portal bay area. pointing out the thing about uh, resetting the kill count because if you want to go for conquest or not conquest if you want to go for all kills the east ending or the one on the far right is the only official one and over here you're gonna have to deal with tons and tons of respawns you have to get to like 200 and it's not practical so if you just want to go for fast and easy this is the direction now I have to climb out of this tower this big hole there's two sets of ladders and walkways. They're just copy paste of the same and both sides have enemies. You can just pick one and climb all the way to the top. Or you can have your group split and have different players go on different sides. Or if you're a total completionist, you can just jump from side to side and do it that way. Please note that to open up the map, I have to complete the quest first and then repeat the quest in a short time after and the map will stay open. So at the beginning of this quest when I show all the walkways and all the ends, that's because I first completed all four options. Just so on my fifth run, the one I recorded, well the first recording, you could see the entire map open. Also, anytime you want to do one of these four optionals, you have to first complete all the quest objectives. That means you have to release all the prisoners and get the barriers down, etc, etc. You have to do everything just so you can get this far. My point is I spent a lot of time getting this quest ready, so I really hope you enjoy it. Okay, anyways, this big room over here we're going to have portals spawn. There'll be five in total. And they spawn, and some seconds after, they will spawn a crate and a few monsters. Now, if you're very quick about it, and you've got crazy DPS, you can destroy the portal before they ever spawn 
they, uh, before they ever spawn the monsters. This isn't really practical. Um, well, it wasn't really practical back when there was no epic destinies. Nobody had good enough DPS to do that. But today is actually pretty possible. If you got the right kind of DPS for portals, you can break them before the monsters ever spawn. I'm not sure, but I believe that if you do not break the portals, they continuously spawn monsters until you break them. I don't know, I haven't let them stay up that long. All these optional runs that I did for the, well, the optional endings, each one of them was also done on Elite. I know I'm starting from the middle of the quest, but it was on the, all done on the same difficulty. I mean, just for reference. If you want to see how difficult the quest is, so you can gauge it for yourself. Again, this optional I think is like the most straightforward when it comes to understanding what needs to be done and having to look for it. You end up next to the elevator portal, just pull the big switch in the middle, go through the elevator portal, walk down the hall and yeah, you're on your way. It's not very complicated. Kind of straightforward but for me also it makes it the least interesting yeah i got that one before it spawned any boxes Anyways, this is the final portal. Yeah, that's it. This is the second ending of this quest. Um, might be your favorite, but... Well, still got two more to go. Okay, now I've got the north. This is the, all the prison cells. This is when we had those prisoners inside of those fiery barriers. So here I am, I'm standing in the north room next to the big lever and then I'm gonna go to the north exit. You hear one of the secure level doors below grind. Like always, as soon as you pull the big lever, you still have to go downstairs, so we're gonna have to go to the elevator portal and head down. But the rest are closed to you. Here we are, now inside of the prisoner's section. And from here we have to go to the back of the room and now the blue barrier is down. You have chosen to assassinate the demon in form. Again, this entire ending is gonna end up being off of the original map, so it's gonna reset your kill count. So keep that in mind. Okay, that's it. You can see we're already off the map. Again, every time you step into these areas, you get a shrine. I don't need it, so I'm just gonna run off. Here we've got a big hallway with a bunch of prison cells. And this is the guard room. And it has 
the levers who control the doors to all the different prison cells. You can see this big ring of levers. Probably noticed that there's one huge lever, and obviously that's going to be our target, the lever we want to pull to get out of here. Now, you can see it's locked, so we first have to do a few things, and then we'll be able to open it. First of all, you open up this hallway, there's a red named guard in the middle of this hall someplace. Um, you have to first kill him. There's two actually red named. One of them spawns right when you start, and one of them will only spawn after you release a certain amount of prisoners. Now you can only open up one prison cell at a time. So we're going to start with the ones that are closest to the exit. Here I'm going to pull the first lever. I'm going to go release whichever prisoner is in the room and come back and rinse and repeat. Continuously walk back and forth, open a prison door, release a prisoner and come back. This exit doesn't take that much time when you're in a party and you can just go between the cells and have somebody open and close all the doors for you. But if you have to do it yourself and run back, it can be very tedious. This is also very not practical to do with a hireling. It would be impossible to guess which lever you need to pull by telling the hireling to pull it. And also, he's gonna probably gonna get killed because there's endless spawning that happens. There's more and more guards keep on coming back in and spawning in the main room. Anyways, I did the one on the left, the one on the right, now I'm just moving up one, that means cell number two. I'm gonna do the one on the right and then the one on the left, and keep on going up the hallway. It doesn't say as an objective how many you have to free, um, but I know you have to free a certain amount before you can move on. Anyways, I'm going to speed up this thing. I'd like to point out that, in general, when I do a run, I do not manipulate the run itself at all. That means there's no cuts, I don't skip anything, I just leave it as raw from the second I enter the quest and all the way until when I'm finished and I get out. So that if technically you'd want to consider it as an official run, you could look at it and say, oh, this is how much time it took him, you did it with so-and-so kills and whatever. And only when I do optionals or little things that are their own, like, well, their own segments, like in this case, where it's, you're only seeing from the middle of the map. So to save some time, I'm speeding it up. This was very necessary since this run I wanted to get all four options in, all four, all four optionals in, in less than an hour. And it was coming really, really close to that deadline mark that I've made for myself. So that's why I'm speeding it up over here. By the way, just so you should know, recording this, I recorded a total of eight times this complete run. Well, sorry, I didn't record, but I ran a total of eight times this complete run just so I can get first the map fully opened and then so I can actually record the four different endings. And that itself took me close to like three hours. Then plus all the editing was at least that much plus some more. So this project probably ended up being like eight hours, not including rendering time and, and the uploading. So I really hope you appreciate it and give me a like and subscribe. My channel is doing great. I've been having more subscribers and more watch time and um, I really appreciate that everybody who's been so supportive and helped my effort shows through and you enjoy it. Maybe it'll keep me going and make me do more of these crazy projects. Anyways, we're about to finish right now. I've released all the prisoners on this side, well, all six cells. Now I'm going to open up the last room. Here we go. The second red named guard is spawned. As soon as we kill him, that will unlock the big lever and we can go to the final room. I have a lurking suspicion that opening up all the cells on one side is good enough. But if you thought I was going to somehow skip out on half of these cells, well, you should know them better by now. Anyways, that's it. 
final room is open. Let's go kill the boss. Also, this hallway probably holds a record for the longest straight hallway and a quest in DDO. Anyways, our boss is a mirrorless, like Queen Lilith from uh, from Zawabi's Revenge. And that's it, it's over. The price for her treachery. The Yugoloth in Amrath will be happy to learn her secret. These boss fights last only a few seconds now that you've got epic levels. Okay, this is the final ending. This is the south. This is gonna be the energy barriers. Here we are, we're standing at the bottom or the south. And this is the guard room, and we're gonna pull the big lever in this room. You hear one of the secure level doors below grind open. A devil screams. A lot of people Security seem to think that this ending the is the nicest the one, and I can see it. Me the personally, it's not my thing, but uh, it's definitely interesting. It's definitely nicer and more creative than some of the other endings. Anyways, as usual, we have to head back to the elevator teleporter. And now we have to head back towards the maze. The maze has these energy barriers, and that's why I'm calling this section the energy barrier section. Also, the final area also involves energy barriers. So, that's how I got it, gave it this nickname. Now, to get to the end, you'll have to go through the center room. So, your goal is to A, find the center room. I don't care which side you come from, find the center room. And we're gonna head out the back of that center room. And that'll take us to the blue lock gate, which is now open. Here we go. This area is open now. And we can walk to the end. Similar you have chosen to, to the east the exit, this path also has, well, two paths to lead to the same place with monsters in both. So, of course, I'm going to walk down both hallways, just so you can see it. Anyways, you might have been playing DDO for many years and never seen some of these hallways or passageways. So, this is your big chance. You might never do it yourself, but at least you can see it. Also think about the developer who put all the time into making this area, not knowing if anybody's going to ever watch it or see it or ever experience it. So at least I got to experience it. Okay, walk through this portal, walk through this big room, and there's, there's a bunch of these Memphis. And they come flying at you. If you fall down, you will instantaneously die and you'll be teleported back. First of all, we'll have to walk through this teleporter on the side. This will take us up to a control room. There's three levers and what they do is they control barriers. You can only have one barrier up at a time. The barrier is on the far side of this here you can see it barely. I'm gonna place my Harling. Now I'm gonna get him to pull the levers. Here you can see pulling the lever opens up the barrier to the side. Okay, I just jumped the gap. I could actually get my Harling to do it for me. 
I'm just a bit disoriented. One second. The guard room's on the other side of this pillar. So, there we go. Up there is where the hireling's standing and there's three levers. Right now he's set to the one on the left, there's the one on the right. I got him to preset it. Now the objective over here is there's three red named Memphis we have to kill at the same time. Well, roughly in the same time. We got a wind, ice, and dust. So I'm going to clear all the rest of the trash. You don't have to do this. And just make sure I don't kill the air Memphis. Once I've got his aggro, I'm going to run back to the center. Here I'm making sure he's following behind. You know I'm going to get my hireling to select the lever on the right and pull it. This will drop the energy barrier on the left and put up the energy barrier or bridge on the right. Here we go, this one is the ice map fit. Make sure I got his aggro and drag him back to the center. You don't have to drag him to the center, you can kill him wherever you want, but I like to do it in the center. Yeah, now I've got all of them and just go for it. My DPS is good enough that I know I can kill them pretty fast and even if one of them stays like now it doesn't have to be like on the same second yeah that's it we've completed it anyways I can get my hireling sorry that side my hireling to select the center valve and pull it that will pull up the small bridge that lets me cross but full disclosure I can just jump across not a problem yeah and that's it this was the fourth ending so I hope you've enjoyed it if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Appreciate it very much. Put lots of hours into this video. And I hope you enjoyed it. And you show your appreciation. Anyways, thank you. Bye.